My coverage of CES 2015 is made possible by Fractal Design and WD. To learn more about their products and to say thank you for supporting Paul's Hardware, go ahead and click on the sponsor links in this video's description. Hello everyone and welcome to my finale video for CES 2015. I have a lot to cover in this video because I got a lot of footage at the show this year. I also hung out with some awesome people so I wanted to start off by saying a big thank you to the Tech Syndicate crew for letting me tag along with them. That's Logan, Kane, Albert, and Josh aka Spanx. Also a big thank you to Kyle and his team for letting me catch a ride with them to and from the show in Las Vegas. And I also wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you guys for watching my video coverage of CES. I did it differently this year than in the past when I've done 25 to 50 videos. I wanted to keep the number down but still give you plenty of coverage so that's why this video runs a little bit long. Feel free to click on any of these links if you want to jump to any specific type of coverage. And I can't finish without also saying a huge thank you to my sponsors for this event, uh, WD and Fractal Design. Speaking of which, we haven't heard much from Fractal Design so far at this show, but that ends now. Let's uh, go ahead and throw it over to an interview that I did with Josh on CES Day 1 before my voice was gone. Hello everyone and welcome to my continuing coverage here at CES 2015. I've made way, my way over to the Fractal booth, which is Josh's hotel room. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, so Josh, first, big thank you uh, for sponsoring uh, the Paul's Hardware Voyage to CES 2015 this year. I really appreciate it. No support. problem. I've made worse decisions, but hey, well, I'll go with it. If you're interested, you can click on the link in the description, and that would at least tell Fractal that you're happy with them supporting my channel. But apart from that, I wanted to talk a little bit about some Fractal products. Okay. Um, but, but, but the idea that you guys are here at CES, and you're mm -hmm. here, and I feel like you have a presence here, mm -hmm. but you don't have a booth. Yes. So that seems to me like you're kind of going with this this whole minimalist Scandinavian thing. You're really taking it to the extreme. You are so minimal, minimalist at CES 2015 that you don't even have floor space. Yeah, I mean that's a little bit too grandiose. You know, we, we do try and keep it, you know, Scandinavian minimalistic. Okay. Uh, we're going really stealth this year, so I kind of pop in and out of meetings. So usually I kind of check out once I get into the meeting. But I feel this way, you know, we can do more one-on-one -on -one type of stuff. I, I can like pay more attention to you, Paul, as a person. Excellent. Well, I, I do appreciate that, and it's definitely a more intimate environment here in the hotel room. Speaking of which, we do have at least a Fractal product here. Shall, shall we go take a look at it? Sounds good to me. So this is the uh, Fractal Kelvin T12. This is an all-in-one liquid CPU cooler. But Josh, when, I, when, when you first talked to me about this, you seemed a little bit sad. And I think there's a reason for that, and that's because these are not currently available in the United States. Is that, that correct? That is correct, yes. Okay. Now, obviously, there's there's issues there, and I'm not going to ask you to comment on anything, but I did want to at least point out to folks that this is available in the international international market. Correct, yep. And so uh, if folks are interested, uh, they can seek this out. This is the T12, which is a 120 millimeter radiator. You guys also have a 240 and a 360 uh, and other models, and some really cool stuff about this. Uh, it's got removable fittings, so you can, you can expand the loop, and the pump can run dry. Which Correct. Yeah, basically, we try to make it as, uh, as full proof as possible. Obviously, if people are going to be moving up, it's kind of a product that grows with you. If you're moving up from, say, a closed loop and then you want to add on a video card or whatever, you know, hey, you, you don't get the fluid bled right the first time, you don't get the air out, it's not going to destroy the pump, it's not going to eat itself. That's beautiful. Well, I really like the features of this and I hope that it is eventually available in the United States, God willing. Uh, for those of you who are inter interested, there's more info on this on the Fractal website. Now, there's one other question I had for you, Josh, but yeah. I, I think we should move maybe to a little bit more intimate environment. Can do. So Josh, I know there's one thing you've really, really been wanting to talk about. Uh, that would be the Fractal Define R5. Yes. New computer case, uh, just recently launched, really has had just a massive positive response to it so far. And I really know it's your favorite. So what I wanted to ask you is what actually makes my video on the Fractal Define R5 your favorite thing? Well, honestly, I mean, aside from the fact that, that I'm in it, that does help. Not much. Okay. Beyond that. No, I, I, I like the fact that you kind of go through it systematically. Uh, you're in your garage, because I know you are, I mean, you're blue collar as it gets. Looking at I do, members I only do. Dickie yep. Jack exactly. That you're rocking here. I got to represent the, uh, the, the working class. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I like all the videos equally. They're like my children, and the fact that I don't feed them and sometimes don't see them for weeks on end. Well, that's uh, not what you told me originally, but I think that's going to wrap it up for this little interview, Josh. Thank you so much yes, for sir. talking to us today and showing us uh, such hospitality here in your in your suite. Oh, it's just getting started. It's been fantastic. Want, All right. I'm going to turn that nozzle there. Stay tuned for more coverage of CES 2015. We'll see you guys very soon.
And of course, WD was also in attendance at CES this year. They had a fan night, which was a lot of fun. And although my time there was brief and my footage from that has gone mysteriously missing, I did go ahead and pull some of Kyle's footage from the event, uh, totally without asking his permission, of course. So here's a quick look at that. It was a lot of fun. They had WD ice sculptures and, and, and hard drives up on pedestals and stuff like that. WD also had an excellent demo at the storage visions portion of the conference. I wasn't able to go there in person, but uh, PC Perspective has an excellent article writing this up. I'll go ahead and link this article in the description. Basically, WD WD was showing off a 4 terabyte SATA Express uh, hard drive that also has an integrated 128 gigabyte J Micron controlled SSD inside. By connecting this via SATA Express, they're able to give a dedicated 6 gigabit per second link to the mechanical hard drive and also have a PCIe Gen 2x2 link for the SSD. They were showing a couple different demo configurations including RAID and it seems like a pretty cool product hopefully coming out later this year. Guys, I'm over at Antec now, uh, taking a look at this new case that they're coming out with, still in development, but this is the P380. Now, Lo Logan, Logan is here over my shoulder as always. Lewd comments. Logan's making lewd comments, but uh, I think that really adds to the ambiance of this uh, particular shot. Here's a look at it from the front. Uh, as you can see, the side panels are off, but what you have up there on top, four millimeter thick aluminum panels. Uh, these are very clean. They're very nicely done. They have sort of a dark gray finish up on top, which looks very nice. Uh, as you can see, they're using Antec fans inside, which are going to be nice and quiet too. Uh, this is the side panel right here. I was just testing it out as far as the build quality and all of that stuff goes. It's fairly rigid. I also like the integration of the window panel on here as well. It's actually a full piece that extends all the way out here to this little edge. Uh, I.O. is actually up here right along the edge, as you can see. you got some USB 2.0, USB 3.0. These can actually be swapped to the opposite side if that is something that you're interested in. And then for the power and reset, you have them available on that side. And you also have power and reset buttons over on this side, too. So uh, let us know in the comments, guys, what you think of this case. Antec is still uh, taking feedback on it, so uh, your feedback is very well desired. We also have the P50 over here. So this is a micro ATX or a mini ITX uh, case that Antec has also dropped a side panel in on, window onto. Smaller form factor here. You can see we got some I.O. up front uh, for USB 2.0 as well as USB 3.0. Uh, you got some fan controls up on the top as well, power and reset button right there too. Uh, radiator support up in the top, you actually have these little panels that can pop on there. So this one is orange. I believe this one's actually going to be sold at Newegg, um, but they're going to do other colors as well. Or if you want something more subdued, they got black of course, and those will pop off and give you a bit of air filtration. So on this side of the case, uh, you have the sort of storage. This is where your power supply would go in at the bottom couple 2.5 inch uh, easy swap bays right there. You got 3.5 inch bays here too uh, that are kind of in their own little chamber so you can actually squeeze those and pop them out. You can put 2.5s in there as well or you can remove this back panel with a thumb screw if you want easy access to those drive cages. As you can see there's uh, air intakes on the side here so it can pull air in, in order to push it back because there are two included 120 millimeter fans right there up front. The split chamber design has proven to be a pretty effective solution for uh, allowing you to to separate the heat generating components from one side of the case to the other and you also have five and a quarter inch bay up on the front so possibly a nice little HTPC build uh, could go in this case that again is the Antec P50 and I'm now at a data I have come yes that's that one right there okay um, so let's start off with talking about some SSDs a data does lots of storage and sits in their name data of course so this is a enterprise server grade SSD and what they have done it's basically they took an SSD which is very fast, but they wanted to accommodate uh, certain situations that might happen, uh, which is data loss in the or data loss in the event of power loss. So you'll notice all these yellow little thingies on there. Those are all capacitors integrated onto the SSD, so that if power cuts out, any hot data that's in the buffer that hasn't been written to the NAND, uh, it'll have enough power to write that to the NAND, and you won't have any data loss when you have power loss, which is very imp important in server grade environments. Uh, Kane will attest to this. My name is Kane, and I approve this message. Okay. We have a bunch of power banks over here. A data does a ton of these. They're all quite high quality, so check those out if you're interested. More stuff over here, more stuff over here. Wow, it's really bright over here. Albert is really interested in these LED lights. Obsessed. They're RGB. He's obsessed with them. Here is the thing I saw at this booth that I was honestly the most excited about. Now, this is an enterprise-grade product. This is not made for consumers. That means it's going to be expensive. But I'm still happy about it because what you got here is M.2. It's on an SSD. That's one freaking terabyte right there. 
And if you look at the specs down here on the card, holy crap. PCI Express Gen 2 by 4 that gives you 20 gigabits per second of bandwidth. It uses a J-Micron JMF811 controller. Uh, MLC NAND flash, but look at the read and write speeds. Good lord. 1600 megabytes per second reads, 1200 megabytes per second writes on a single M.2 SSD. Did you see this? Yeah. Spanx, what do you think? I think this stuff is crazy. I got, I got. All right, guys, I'm now over at Corsair. They have, wow, lots of stuff on display. Uh, I'm just going to run over a few of them for you, as I have been doing on my coverage. Uh, they have the Carbide 330R Titanium Edition that's been updated with a new front fascia. It's kind of cool. There's a, 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 a blacked-out version as well. We got the 100R over there, of course, 100R Silent Edition that they're also working on. Uh, this is a new thing. So uh, the HD10 is a water cooling bracket that you can use to water cool uh, a graphics card. Uh, they came out with it for the 290X. Uh, this is now the NVIDIA edition, and they're using it with the reference GTX uh, 780 here. This is going to give you a lot more compatibility uh, across the board because, uh, as I have been told by Corsair, uh, the NVIDIA versions actually with the uh, reference design or with the custom versions of the NVIDIA graphics cards, whether you're talking 700 series or 900 series, uh, they're a lot more easily compatible. So they've actually got two systems running side by side here. With the HD10 cooling it, we're topping out at about 59 or 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, and then we're also having a full Fermark burn and test running here. And uh, you might notice that uh, they're not, not much in the way of dropped frames as far as that goes. Whereas over here with the reference design, uh, we have, well, we have much higher fan speed, so it's going to be louder. Uh, we have a GPU temperature of 84, which means that it's going to be throttling your GPU clock. Uh, and then it also, it's running at 823 here versus uh, 862 on the other system. And then we're also going to have drop frames in the Fermark test. So yes, water cooling your graphics card is an effective way to get higher GPU clocks and lower temperatures and also less noise. Here's Corsair's new flagship uh, closed loop CPU cooler. It's the H110i GT. So uh, the I means it's got all of the cool stuff that the H100i had as far as the Corsair link and everything. And then this is the GT edition because it's their top end one. It's a 280 millimeter radiator. And then uh, actually, let me show you it installed. That's better. There it is installed. You can see the Corsair logo in blue there at the center. That is RGB, so you can switch that around if you want to. Uh, this is installed in the 760T, uh, as you can see. And it's got a 280 millimeter radiator going on at the top. And also we have a demonstration of Corsair Link software going on where you can monitor not just the LED and information about the uh, closed loop CPU cooler itself, but also other fan temperature, uh, fan speeds and temperatures throughout your system. There's a new power supply, the HX1200i, fully modular, 1200 watts, 80 plus platinum, uh, blue and black aesthetic. Uh, and, and a very nice looking car, uh, power supply. Also, you've got Corsair Link built in there as well, so it's going to be compatible if you want to do a full Corsair dot system and use Corsair Link to monitor all your stuff. DDR4, of course, as well. Uh, we have some Dominator Pros over here, and Corsair has been steadily pushing up the frequency that the DDR4 memory can run at. Uh, we're seeing this one running actually at about fifth. No. No, wait, what is it? DRAM frequency right now, 1750. So double that up, and what do you get? Uh, wait, math, math, 3,500. That's what this memory is running at right now. And if the silver is not your thing, Corsair has also got this one decked out to match the Gigabyte motherboard with some uh, specially customized top pieces right here. Here's Corsair's newest SSD. This is the Neutron Series XT solid state drive. This is a 960 gig one. Very nice high capacity. And uh, the cool thing about this one is it's using the new Fizon controller. That's going to give you pretty much just about as fast of speeds as you can get on the SATA 3 interface 6 gigabit per second and every time I see one of these new fast SSDs and they're on SATA I'm like how fast would it be if it was M.2 but uh, I'll ask Corsair maybe maybe they'll look into some M.2 SSDs soon because I think that's where the that's what I would be more excited about this is a really fast one though so check out the Neutron XT if you're looking for a new SSD right now
do a video of us taking a selfie. Okay. Take a picture of okay, ready? Okay, you gotta get it. Okay, ready? Go. One more, smile. 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 Guys, I'm stopping by the Monoprice booth um, because I wanted to show you some of the products that you uh, might not know that Monoprice actually sells. For instance, 65-inch TV right there, pretty cool. Uh, these guitars that are down there, they also have a home entertainment center. It's uh, Bluetooth enabled and all that good stuff. Monoprice has also been working on 3D printers, which are pretty sweet. There you can see it running along in there. This is a dual extrusion ABS PLA PVA 3D printer, $999 MSRP. Here's a gorgeous looking Origin PC uh, that they have set up here. Very, very nice job by the Origin P PC guys there. Monoprice, uh, Monoprice does not sell this, unfortunately, but they have it connected to some of their monitors. And I think their monitors are the things I've been more, most excited about lately. Uh, so here's a 24 inch, 144 hertz. This is made for gaming, so if you're into high frame rate gaming, 144 hertz for 250 bucks MSRP and sometimes goes low, lower than that. Uh, they're going to be bringing this out in a 4K version eventually as well. We've also got a 30 inch uh, LED backlit. This one is also high frame rate, so it goes up, or high refresh rate, it goes up to 120 hertz, uh, 2560 by 1600, 30 inch. And uh, this one also has incredible color reproduction going on as well. You get a full stand, remote control, height, tilt, swivel adjustment, all those good things in a 30 inch panel and uh, LED backlit, so nice and thin too. Sweet. Over here we got a 22 inch, uh, this is just 1080, but it is a full interactive pen drawing display. Uh, the pen has disappeared, so I can't show you guys, uh, but this one could actually sit in for like a Wacom tablet or something like that. It is that precise. It's also got 16.7 million color support, so Adobe RGB support, 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity, and a quick charging pen. Over here is Monoprice's 4K display. Uh, this is the one that I already did the video on, so if you guys are interested, check that out, because uh, I, I hopefully went into a fair amount of depth. But you might also notice what's going on down here. That's an RGB keyboard. Yes, full RGB keyboard. Mechanical cherry switches. They have uh, cherry MX reds and blues available. Full RGB uh, backlighting on the keyboard, and they're uh, developing their software right now to give lots of functionality for changing the color configuration and that sort of thing. Where it links is we got uh, WRT 1900 AC dual band gigabit Wi-Fi routers. Look, look how cool they look when they're lit from underneath. This is a gigabit Wi-Fi outer. Oh, the only one different. This is the 1200 AC. Ah, the outer. Or this one here is 1900. Yeah. This is a router. Just see. So yeah. Okay. Oh, they got outers. They don't have any inners. I was looking for inners. Where yeah, are all the uh, inners well, at? Actually, there might be some inners um, over there. Checking out the Razer booth really quick, guys. There's only one thing here that I think you're interested in. Open source VR. This is Razer's uh, new de dev kit that they've announced just at CES. It's a virtual reality simulation thing. It's basically like the Oculus, but maybe it's even better. I just got done using it. The demo models that they've got sitting here, they actually have a, a, um, a leap motion controller attached to the front of it, so it picks up your hand movements while you're using it. It's kind of a nifty uh, demo. Uh, I'd say that the graphics on the machine itself are on par with the Oculus. You can't get really much better than that. What resolution? They didn't say I didn't ask. All I know is that I'm more interested in if I can see the little squares on the screen, and I can. So it looks very good. Like the graphics on the game were much very rudimentary, so they weren't very fancy and fancy. But uh, otherwise, it was it functional. I like this demo much more than most of the Oculus demos I've been given. So excellent. You heard it, guys. Straight from Kane. OSVR from Razer. <laughs>
You should say it a little bit more like Johnny Depp. How does he say it? We're somewhere around Barstow. Yeah. We're somewhere around Barstow. It is. It is. Well, the drugs begin. Take hold. Some shit like that. I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> We're somewhere around Barstow. On the edge of the desert. The drugs begin to take hold. The tech. <laughs> <laughs> also, there are power and reset buttons. Fucking wild, dude. Why are you guys dropping F-bombs on my video? <laughs> My favorite thing about CES always is the people that I come here to meet and to, to commute. Oh, you! That is you that is such a, a that is such a cop out copycat. answer. You guys are sex. Copycat. It's not the tech; it's the people you're with that you, makes CES a you, special event. You said that copying me because no, I didn't have that. No, I did not. I said period. that first. Right. Okay, continue. People. Well, you know what I hate most about CES? These all right, two. fine. I don't give two shits about any of you motherfuckers. All right. You can't. All I really cared about oh, is this M.2 drive. Thank you. I had this M.2 drive yeah. with 1,600 megabytes per second reads and 1,200 megabytes per second writes. It was made by Adata. It had a black PCB. And it was awesome. That's all I care about. Okay. All right. Camera speed. These members only. It's very different. No, it's not. Not really at all. Hold Which on. camera are you shop at? This is a, this is a, a working person's jacket. It shows that I'm a working class citizen. Yeah. Sure. Blue sure collar is. YouTuber. <laughs> As evidenced by your microphone. Is <laughs> <laughs> out in the workshop all day? Exactly. All right. Norm from the New Yankee <laughs> workshop. Okay, today what we're going to do is <laughs> we're going to mount this microphone on the camera stand here. If it's blinking, if the uh, record light is blinking, does that mean it's on standby or does that mean it's... You should see a recording. counter start. Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah, you've been recording for a minute and 40 seconds already. Perfect. All right. So I got all that. B-roll's done. B-roll's yeah. done. You did. All right. Uh, what yeah. aperture are you at? What's it like? This, is, this is rolling, right? Yep. Did you, you double check, check this? Yeah. Out? Okay. 